Right, so obviously I'll record this, I'll put it on YouTube uh, at some point. Uh, cool. But let's have a look over what happened. So what's your game plan going into this? Um, I guess kind of what I look at is just where I want to path, who I want to gank for. Uh, I, I typically start on bot uh, to get a leash and then maybe try and get one gank top. I'm not too keen on the gank on top. With Scion and Urgot. Okay. Um, and other than that, playing maybe t more towards bot with the Thresh Ganks and Lanterns and stuff. But, okay. Um, that's, that's generally, at least in, in Champion Select, that's what I'm looking at. Is just like, who has CC? Where can I get at least a reasonable gank? And or, like, if I only have a single tank, I may try and camp them more just to make sure we have some kind of front line. Okay. Um, yeah, so so where do you want to be as Fellow 6, do you think? What do you mean? So where, where do you want to be in the majority of games? Where do you want to impact? Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I hear nowadays it's bot lane. Okay, you only hear that nowadays. <laughs> it's... <laughs> yeah. It's been like that for years, my friend. <laughs> well, I mean, I've kind of only started jungling recently. This is okay. this last uh, end of last season. Yeah. So the um, the thing is, people often um, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, you know, like these other lanes are really good." You know, like nope. Bot lane for the longest time is just the strongest lane. Like especially even now, like now it's tank meta. It's even um, stronger, right? Uh, because mm -hmm. they need to actually deal with those tanks. So why do you think as fiddlesticks that's also really important? Um, I'm going to go with Dragon Control. Yeah, okay. What else do you think? I couldn't tell you. Okay, so think of how your abilities work. I mean, I know this sounds kind of patronizing, but I'm, I am going somewhere. Sure. So. Oh, you're good. What what is the main purpose of your abilities? Uh, to, I mean, I mean, just on the most basic level, fear and silence to yeah. uh, at least yeah early game to lock down at least one okay person. What what's your damage uh, output? What's your damage type? Magic. Yeah. How many a how many people yeah. are you gonna? I mean, are you single target? Are you multi? Uh, multi-target with my drain yeah. and my ult. Yeah, very multi-target, right? So, mm -hmm. one of the things when you're playing these kind of champions with these huge ultimates, because you can very easily impact multiple people, you kind of naturally end up navigating towards bot lane anyway. Um, but, now that the matter is great for it as well, it's really, really good. Now, obviously, Fiddlesticks did get hit quite hard, but the fact that um, he can't multi-clear anymore, which is very painful. I mean, Fiddlers used to have something like a 255 clear or something like that. Um, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter too much. So, another really important with bot lane, uh, important thing with bot lane as well is that you can get your ultimate off from really kind of weird angles, if that makes sense. Sure. Because, you know, you can jump over the walls and obviously in mid lane as well, you can jump over raptors. So, ideally, most of the time, you want to be bouncing between mid and bot lane. Just because they're yeah. where you're going to have the most impact. And this game as well, like, you've got Sai on top, right? So it's like, does it really matter? So, what what path do we go with here? So if uh, we just end establish up... we want to be bot lane, what, what are we going with here? Well, in this game, I just did a full clear towards top. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess there's a potential to do, like, a three clear into a gank, a three camp. Um, okay, potentially. I... I'm I'm a little I, I never quite know if I should. I always feel bad if I try and go for that and then my yeah. bot ends up pushing in. Yeah, so you don't really um, need to need to. Now the, the the main thing that you do want to be doing though is when you're in loading screen you want to evaluate, okay, where am I looking to go or where do I want to be? And then path around that. So mm -hmm. there is obviously so what is your first three rotations of camps gonna be, do you think? What's your three clear is going to be? Uh, do you think that's like far full, ahead? Like, or? Yeah, well, so typically what I do, um, also trying to follow the 3-2-1 rule, is I'll full, I'll full clear towards top, 
try and get him a gank, and then I'll do kind of a quadrant clear slash outside in. Okay. And just maybe do more bottom quadrant, uh, and then top quadrant, and kind of jump back and forth like that. Okay. That's typically my at least my first two clears is, is generally what I go for. Okay, so you have you have multiple options on fiddle six. If you want to impact bot, great. That's where you should be. So starting bot isn't the worst if you have a top lane that you can kind of get something through. Unfortunately, this game you don't. So it's kind of a bit pointless. But say, for example, if we had a top lane that we really wanted to impact early, let's say bot lane is Ezreal and Yumi, right? We're probably going to want yeah. our six and ideally their six, but our six primarily before we go there. So if we have an Ezreal Yumi bot lane, we're going to look to start red and path towards top because anybody top is going to be better. Now what that then does is that means that your first three camp um, paths is going to be red, into Krugs, into Chickens, into Walls, into Gromp, into Blue. Then you look to get something off on top. Then you reset and you come back and you go Krugs, into Raptors, into Wolves, into Gromp. This Gromp will spawn straight away, obviously, because you take it before blue buff. That's why we make that variation in our path. And then what will actually happen is, let's say, for example, and then we'd go top again after that full clear. If on the first time we go, we get Flash, great. Then the second time we go, we potentially get a kill, amazing. What that's going to do is that gives us enough XP that then as we run out of base, we could take red, and that'll actually give us six. So then that gives us six straight away, so then we go straight to bot. But the issue with this game is because we don't have anybody top lane that really has much kill potential, we want to avoid starting down here, uh, full stop. So what we want to do is we want to go blue. I want to go blue, gromp, this, 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 and then we look for a level four gank bot. And then we reset, we do it again, and then we look for another gank bot you see what i mean and then what we do again is then when we come up then we'll get our blue buff which will give us six if we've got a kill if we didn't get a kill blue and grump will get us six then we take this and then we actually ignore these three camps initially after we've cleared here we just then run straight into bot so we either go around here like this and then hop the wall or we go to say here if they're like here and then we hop the wall or what we can do is, um, let's say this mid is pushing up, we can also come like this, and then we can hop this wall, stuff like that, right? So your f first few clears on fiddles are always going to be the most important because it determines what you're going to do with your actual game. So it's okay. like, is this like more specific to fiddle just because I I'm the importance of hitting six? Yeah. So you get you get certain archetypes of champs, right? So you have uh, the like level six champs, which usually mages. So you have things like fiddles. You have things like uh, Eve, um, even like a Diana. So these champions, they really, really want to get to that six. So you'd look to kind of run the same style of pathing on all of those champions. But then you have um, like the aggro junglers that don't really care about any of this. So things like uh, Lee. Uh, Renga, we've got like Xin Zhao, uh, Javan. So these are all the champions that just want to kind of go into lanes, get pressure and do something with it early. So what do you notice about both of these champs? About when they're strong? Um, I'm sorry, I'm not... That's okay. I, I mean, as far as aggro being early or strong early versus... Yeah, so like strong early. Strong later. Yes, exactly, exactly. So because these champions are stronger later, it means that these champions are forced to do something. So each champion will have different kind of points throughout the game where they're going to be powerful. So knowing when those points are are really, really important. But what we'll find is, yeah, Fiddle, Eve, Diana, they want to go for six. But what that means is if you're playing this group of champions, you need to shut them down early. So uh, who are you playing against in jungle again in this game? In this game, uh, uh, Zach. Zach. Okay, so Zach is never really gonna look to invade you, um, because he kind of wants to somewhat get to six as well, I guess. He can gank earlier, but it's meh. Um, so 
what ends up happening here now is you're not really going to get invaded so you don't have to worry but if say for example you were in something like a zin you have to start pathing away from them so let's say for example um oops come on i swear my browser's been so bugged lately <laughs> come on where's my rift kit there we go so if say well because we're against a zack it's fine we just clear however's good for us so bum 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 now if say for example we're in say zin zhao we have to then clear different. So if we're into a Zin, what we have to do is we have to ward here early. And then because he'll always start red, like a good jungler will anyway, um, then you would start to, you would look to go blue so that you can clear everything and then path away from him. Well, right, not away I, from I, him. Yeah. Can I pause you for a second there? What, like he'll always start red because if a good jungler would, like how do I... How do I determine who's going to start red or not? Because I feel like most people start bot side just for the leash. Yeah, so if they if he starts bot, it means he's not as good. So the thing with, with these like early game picks is the red buff is their most important because um, their ganks are really, really reliant on them actually getting something. Like if you gank as fiddles on a level 4 gank just because you're in the area, it doesn't necessarily matter if you only get a flash. That's great. That's amazing. Even if you just get like a heal. Amazing. Fine. Whereas if you're playing something like a Zin Zhao and you don't get anything in a gank, you're in trouble because you're going to get outscaled. So it's sure. like okay. you need that red because it's going to give you so much more power in your ganks. And it, it depends. Like there's certain ways you can kind of play it. Usually what you used to do is if, say, for example, Zin wants to start red, you'd also start red so that he paths down and you path up. But the issue you have with some of those champions is they'll go red buff and then they'll look to come into your jungle. So you have to kind of clear that away first. Um, or what you can do is you can get this ward early and then go down here. So the main thing that I'm kind of saying to kind of do is if you're playing into an aggressive early jungler, and you want to start red, just walk up here, use your ward there, and then recall in this bush and get sweeper, and then just do your clear. Like, yeah. as you would. Um, yeah. But yeah. But here in this game, uh, blue buff was the better start, because then you're actually pathing into bot lane, and you can get some pressure off. And especially, what do you think is unique about your bot lane in this game that's really, really good for you? If you gank it, how are you going to get in the lane? Oh, th I'm Lantern. Yeah, if, yeah. If, yeah. So it's very, very easy for you to actually gank bot lane um, in this game. Okay, nice double kill as well. So they're already snowballing. So that's really, really good for us. I miss being able to multi-clear. <laughs> I always, I always messed it up more often than oh, not. Yeah. So. It, it was a hard <laughs> clear. It was a hard clear, to be fair, but so good. Okay, so also another thing you can do here when you're clearing your uh, camp is just smite the Grom to get it to come to you. Because you're going to smite anyway, right? So just smite it first, make it walk to you, and then you save a little bit of time. Might not seem like a lot of time, but it's yeah. something. Yeah, no, I'm going to use the excuse this was the first game, so I was still, oh, okay. like, uh, waking That's up. Fair. I, 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 try to, I try to at least kill the like the blue buff as I'm starting the Gromp. Yeah, okay, good um, stuff. Yeah. Whether it's Smite or, or Drain, yeah. to pull it. Yeah. That's good. So what is something that we should have done here, though? Um, I'm going to imagine you say immediately path top. Mm, no, something more simple. So we just think Zach bot. What should we be looking at? How many camps uh, either, has Zach taken? See, this that's I have no idea. I don't that's the one thing I don't pay I need to pay more attention to. Yeah. yeah. Um so do you know so how yeah. to find out how many camps he's done? It just hold tab and Yeah. So hold tab, look. look at CS. Each camp gets four CS, which means you can then use that to you know, four times table, how many camps has he taken? Oh, okay, he's only taken five camps. Great, his Krugs are up. We'll go and take them, you know? And I'm assuming that that just comes with experience, just kind of knowing yeah, different junglers and what pass they take. Or... A little, yeah, yeah, somewhat. But um, sometimes it's a little bit straightforward because obviously if say, oh, God, this Scion kind of grief that. Uh, this was oh. painful. And then okay. he flashes and gets out. And yeah. I burned my flash too. So one thing here, 
we want to wait to layer our CC. So um, what we want to do is wait for the Scion Q to go through. And then if he dodges it, then we Q. So because what happened here, see, is we stacked our CC together. And like, I mean, ours actually resulted in him not getting knocked up by the Scion. But if he did get knocked up by the Scion there, then he would have, uh, he would have died. So, oh, no. So, yeah. yeah, like, with Fiddles, Fiddles is a very somewhat reactive jungler. You want them to kind of walk into you so that you can get damage off. If they're already walking away, then they're as good as gone. So don't don't really stress about following it or chasing it. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so this camp is gone. Probably should have just committed to the back since it's so close to the tower, but yeah. figured maybe I'd get something. Because what, what is happening right now on the map at this exact second that you should be looking for? Huh? The science bit. I, yeah, he didn't like that I pushed in the wave. Ah, it's fine. So right here, what uh, should you be looking at? What has just happened while you were taking this crap? It's on the map at the minute. It's showing. I'm, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, dragons spawning soon. Yeah. I don't. Uh... So, do you remember what uh, we were speaking about when fiddles? What what fiddles wants? To to keep clearing. So you talk about krugs spawning in bottom. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. So when you're playing these junglers that are very reliant on farming, your goal is to basically be on this camp as the yellow um, timer is showing. So okay. right here, like we should already be be kind of reset, um, and then passing. Do I water. skip? Do I skip scuttle to do that? Or no, no, this is okay, but we could have just smited it as well. Okay. So we just get it six hundred, smite it, instantly start recalling, and then we go straight into this bot camp. Because it doesn't matter if we're a few seconds behind, because we're a after we've reset once, we're going to be clearing the the camp so much faster mm -hmm. that it's fine, right? So, so good first buy. Boots are incredibly important. I like your your best buy, basically. Okay, yes. so it's, you see here, are we going to try and influence bot? So this is kind of like, so full clear into like outside in. So I look for like a gank and then yeah. I'll start to clear if I can get it. Is that yeah, so reasonable? You, so your main goal as someone like Fiddle6 is always going to be to full clear all your camps away and then look for something. So what okay. you're trying to do is you're trying to set yourself up to clear everything and then be somewhere that you can have impact. So like, for example, this is why we wanted to start top so that we can full clear and then have impact in bot. And then we can do it again. Full clear, have impact bot. Full clear, and then ult bot. You know? Cool. Whereas, with the clear that we've currently gone, there's no real scope for us to actually impact top in a substantial way. Cyan will be tanky eventually. Um, and maybe it gets ahead. It's whatever. If you kill his entire team, it's not going to matter. This is seeing Zach on bot. Okay. So now I'm running into his jungle. Not too bad. Not too bad. But the, you are punishing him. Great. But you're also punishing yourself. Because now, on your next clear, this camp's gone. So this is already respawning now. But these two camps um, are going to be still up. So then when you come for another clear, you're going to clear this Raptor camp away and then you're going to have nothing to do because these are going to respawn at a much later time. So kind of your sequencing is incredibly important when you're playing somebody like Fiddles. That's how you're going to get things like 10 CS a minute. Interesting. It's all about when you're on those camps to take them. So here, this would have actually been a, a, a time to maybe look to reset your path. So what you do here... Is you'd bottom. still go, yeah, top, go down. 
Uh, and then when you end up having a period where you do stay on the map for a prolonged period of time, everything will then respawn going down and then you go down and play like that. So maybe as a general rule on fiddle, don't don't uh, see that's weird to me because like cause earlier you were talking about uh, basically invading Zach's. Once I saw Zach bottom on the first clear, you were saying invade. Yeah, but it wasn't so... right on the second clear. No, so here, um, where was it? Hold on. So here, so if we invade him after this. So say if we tab right here and we see that he's only five camp, we clear mm -hmm. both of these camps away anyway, and now we've got nothing left, right? So then we can invade him and take this away. Oh, that's fine. Okay. But on this second one, um, we will actually end up stunting ourselves on our next clear more by going for this than what we will benefit. So it's because I finished the first clear, then I can invade. Yeah. So if you've cleared this all one... of your camps, great. If you haven't, then it's usually better to get your camps. Okay. Especially because it, so... this season they implemented um, anti-counter jungling as well, which means you do less damage to enemy camps. So it's actually harder to counter jungle. Okay. That makes sense. So now, to be honest, we just want to look to... So this is the thing, right? Our... our our spawn timers on things like buffs are a little bit scuffed at the minute um, just because of how we've been clearing which don't get me wrong like this is these are things that I see diamond players not clearing properly so it's no it's not like a, oh this is a really niche thing that only you are doing it's very very common yeah don't look at this <laughs> yeah oh, oh, oh. yeah yeah so the, the general rule of thumb with fiddles is because his Q does so much more damage if they're already feared um, you always want to be ulting from out of vision. Yeah, I tried to do that. Like, tried to talk into the. Uh, yeah, unfortunately not. Hit there, but I think I it's. Yeah, I think I... it's like three seconds of not being in vision. Uh, um, let me look. Not sure. Pretty sure it's three seconds. Actually, that's there's a good question there. So two point five seconds. I... Sorry. Um. Yeah. So typically after I like, let's say like I ult in and get like a, a whatever single fear, group fear or whatever, I won't drop my fear. Um, I'll basically hold on to my fear to look to fear another target later. Should I, should I use that as my damage, a part of my damage rotation? Uh, yeah, so um, so your, your damage on your Q gets doubled. Yeah. So instead of um, doing 20% of their current HP, instead of doing 10% of their current HP, it does 20%. Well, plus, so depending on how much AP you've got. So, like, let's say you have 100 AP early, then uh, you're going to do, instead of 10% plus 2%, so instead of doing 12%, you're going to do 24, which is huge. Okay. So 24% of their current HP with a single Q is insane. That damage is <laughs> unbelievable. I've been missing that damage the whole time. Yeah. So, yeah, like it's just fear in and then just queue whoever the priority target is and you'll do so, so much damage. Gotcha. Because it's like these fights as fiddles are kind of kind of tough anyway. So another thing here is we're on the dragon and then they come. So what you should be doing is you should be going, okay, enough of the dragon. I'm going to look for a fight. So what you need yeah. to be doing is you need to be positioning yourself now. You need to kind of walk up here and then just double you all three of these at once. Mm -hmm. Instead, what we kind of do is we sort of walk back to the dragon. We continue. Yeah, it was. That. I'm going to, I'm going to give myself the benefit of the doubt since my drain was on cooldown is why I was kind of waffling around. Yeah. But, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So when it was off cooldown, we still just kind of used it on the drag. Which, yeah, yeah. if the enemy jungler is there, you never really want to go for a flip. Flips are never good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I flipped pretty much every objective this game. Oh, yeah, yeah. You definitely want to try and avoid that. So here, we're just looking to full clear everything away. 
Like, uh, we can go bot, which is fine. We can potentially look to dive. Okay, so this is kind of another one of them things, right? Because right here, so we're prioritizing invading for camps way, way too much. So right here, this is a very, very good opportunity bot. I can kill Lux and potentially Twitch, and we can do it from this wall. So what we should uh -huh. have been looking to do here is Blast going over to blue, walk down to this wall, and then ult over the wall. If we do that, we kill them both. So it's like here we have guaranteed kills, but instead of, you know, potentially 600 gold, we went with the camp. 34 or whatever. Yeah. I need, uh, maybe I just need, like, some flow chart of... of... Yeah. I mean, Take camps, invade versus okay. gank. Because I, I mean, I definitely don't understand that. I, yeah. I'll be the first to admit. I mean, if if it was that simple, but like it, it's it's something that will come over time. But mm -hmm. the important thing is that you you kind of start. I mean, well, one of the first big things is that we did. Did you know about the kind of alts over walls and stuff like that? I yeah, I mean, sense. I I don't know the like perfect spots or anything, but yeah, okay. I, I I generally I, I have a general feel okay, for where good. where i can get over long walls yeah so our main goal is always to look for um kills when we have six so what you do then is when you have six you're like okay where can i get a kill because your six is so powerful it's like where do i kill where do i kill where do i kill okay there's a kill let's go for it either get the kill get the flash whatever and then it's like okay your ult is on cooldown now go and clear your camps go back to farm. and yeah, then okay. once you get it up again you go okay where am i gonna kill and then you look for it again because again, your six is so so impactful. It's crazy. I'd see that uh, easy. You didn't even use Q there. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't yeah. use. I don't use it as a part of my rotation. Okay. Like I know it does more damage, but I feel like it's more important to save it for like another target that's gonna jump on me, so I can fear them away and get out. Uh not really. Well, I mean, some situations, sure. Um, mm. But if you can't 100 zero with your ult quite quickly and easily, then just look for a kill instead. Also here, instead of going with an amp tone, get Dark Seal. Okay. Because, uh, I... like, one of the main things that you're looking for, and one of the main reasons um, with... The, the main kind of benefits to your build as fiddlesticks is that mages can build ridiculous amounts of penetration early. So you have um, your boots, which are 18 pen, and then you will have um, your rocket belt, which gives six by default. Uh, and then on top of that gives five for every mythic. So then what you do is you upgrade your seal to a magi's, so you get another five. And then once you get one more item, you get another five. And then what this ends up doing is this gives you um, a total of 34 magic pen. Okay. Now, the average champion is anywhere between 28 to 34 magic pen early. I Actually, it's like 33-ish. So we're looking in this range. So what ends up happening is... Um, well, there, there is some exceptions, like Talon is 39, um, Cassio, I think, is 35, uh, and Rise, I think, is 38. Um, but the majority of champions are going to be around this mark. So as soon as you have your core items, and even when you just have Boots, Magi's, and Rocket Belt, you're doing very, very close to true damage with your abilities. So that means right. if your ability says you will do 100 damage, you will do 100 damage, you know? Yeah. Um, so it becomes really, really valuable. And that's how you can snowball so incredibly hard early. And that's why I was saying earlier with those kind of early game champions, that's why their goal is to shut you out and shut you down before you get a chance to ramp up. Because if you get to a point where you're strong, then they can't really do as much about you then. Especially fiddle six because obviously you ult from out of vision, and you just do a ridiculous amount, you know. Okay, so we don't get spotted there. So 
So now we should be looking to be bought. Yeah. I'm heading there. A little late. Yeah. There we go. Oh. I, I guess it works, to be fair. <laughs> okay, not bad. I mean, it works. Never looks good, but... Mm. I tend to get it done sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you got it at least. <laughs> so yeah, so this is one of the things, right? And this is why League is so hard, right? Because when you first look at this game, you go, oh, early game has gone great, right? But then it's like, if you don't know the the mistakes that you've made because you don't know they exist, then it's really hard to change them, right? Like, Yeah. So here, now one of the main things you want to be looking for here is just to get your jungle item finished. Okay, I can't believe she missed everything there. Okay, so unfortunately we don't have ultimate. Uh, actually, we might have ultimate in time. No, we don't, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we want to be looking to clear these camps away. Okay, so unfortunately they get it, but... Oh, no, we got it. Oh, nice. Oh, we got it, yeah. Okay, so what do we do here? Okay. So this is kind of another one of those situations, right? Like... Oh, wait, did we... Were we walking to stop to protect Yasuo or just to drop the Herald? Mostly to drop the Herald. Oh, okay. So right here, what we should be doing is we should be saying, okay, well... We really, really want Yasuo to get this tower because this tower is 550 gold as soon as he mm -hmm. takes it. So what we want to do is we want to go, okay, we want him to take this. Okay, great. So what we want to do then is just sit here and wait to see if somebody comes. That, that's all we want to do. Just sit there and be like, okay, let's wait. See if someone comes. And if they do, if they do, then we just ult straight over, right? So here, the issue is because they can see us, our ult won't really have that much of an effect. Whereas if he, you know, didn't see us, we could have actually done a massive amount to him. Because remember, like, he is current HP, but um, right now, look how much, uh, does he have any MR items? No. No. Well. Uh, not really. I mean, a little bit a little on bit, his, uh, yeah. yeah. I guess a little bit, but no, he doesn't have a massive amount right now. So this 24% um, of his current HP is... Huge. Actually, no, we haven't maxed Q, right? We maxed W. So it, it's still, though, uh, with three points in Q, we're going to be doing 16... Actually, we've got 100 AP now, right? So we'll actually be doing 20% uh, of his current HP, mm -hmm. which is huge. Like, what, 20% is 2,500 HP right now. So crazy, crazy strong. So that's 500 damage just straight up with one ability. Okay, okay. so here we kind of we kind of overstay. Yeah, for sure. So this is going to kill us no matter what, guaranteed. Yeah, so right I wasn't there, sure if it was going to. Oh, yeah, yeah, it will. It will. So even if it doesn't, we, we still run away. Because we don't want to overextend like this. Yeah. As as an ADC main, I, I usually play like a pussy, and I, I usually will be out of those positions. But yeah, I don't know. That's the thing. This is the thing as well. Like applying it to different roles is always always really really important. Uh huh. Because unfortunately, as well, like there's also a lot more pressure on you this game, based on um how the game is because. Jin is not really going to be able to deal with double, like, beefy players, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to make something happen early, because if we don't, then it's going to be really rough. So all of these points pre this 20 minutes where we said, okay, do this, do that, do that. Those are the things that you want to be focusing on more than any. 
Because there's no way, like, we have no way of killing. I mean, Yasuo, maybe, actually. I mean, he's going to be the only one that can kill uh, the Zack and the Ergot. So, to be honest, in this game, we probably should have been mid more. Especially when we got six. Just focusing on allowing this Yasuo to get as head of as he can. And so, yeah. being able to evaluate what's actually happening in the game or what will happen is obviously something that's very difficult because it's going to take a long time to learn. But. You know, you have to learn eventually. Why not now? You know what I mean? So uh, it seems like it's it's generally more important to focus the carries than have someone that can tank for us. Yes. That's, in, my, in my mind, having at least at least getting a tank early so that he can he doesn't just get shredded allows you know uh, the ADC or, or mid to get some damage in. Um, uh, at I mean, least that's how I think. So I, I, maybe I should focus more then on the carries. I mean, it's good that you're thinking about these things. But the the other thing to consider is if you're a tank and you have a thousand HP, or well, let's say two thousand, just to make it a bit more accurate. Um, or to be honest, now tanks are broken. Let's say four thousand yeah, right. to make it more accurate. Um, the thing you have to think is, let's say for example they were further behind and they only have three thousand instead because you haven't ganked them. If your ADC is doing 500 damage a second instead of 250 they don't actually have to tank for as long because your adc are going to kill the entire enemy team right mm -hmm. so it's like the more damage that your carries have the easier it is for your tanks because they don't have to survive as long and they take less damage because everyone's dead yeah yeah exactly right so it's like you never really want to focus a tank lane oh wait this is we already saw this you never really want to focus a tank lane because of that. You just want to be focusing, getting your carries ahead. If you can consistently get your ADC ahead every single game, you're still going to lose some games, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. your chance of winning is going to go up by a significant margin. And considering we're already... Um, okay, I haven't got your OP up anymore. But considering we're already doing pretty well in terms of win-loss and stuff, right? Like, That's kind of our yeah. focus. So the point of this and why why coaching is actually going to help you a lot right now is because you're already you already have a ton of momentum. We're just trying to make sure that you retain said momentum and, and potentially even get more because you're already winning a quite a significant amount more than you're losing. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm I think I'm plateauing a little bit right now. Um, yeah, you always will. It's, but it's, uh, this thing a lot a lot of the yeah. things that you need to focus on at the moment are more to do with kind of fundamentals of jungling. Like, uh -huh. don't get me wrong, you've been doing some things wrong on the champion, and obviously not knowing some of the interactions and stuff like that is huge. But um, overall, it hasn't been horrific in the slightest. Like, it's just making sure that you're getting those correct clears off, you're being efficient with your clears, focusing your... Because, like, right now, for example, you're not even prioritizing your runes. So this is one of the reasons why I tell people to just go with the same runes. And if they change in the future, like buy like one or two runes, just don't care about it. Just focus on making sure that you can use the runes that you have rather than trying to take a different rune page that, you know, Faker has taken in a game once. <laughs> so it must be the best because the high-low players, they'll know the exact situations where they need to vary their runes slightly, whereas you only need that in high-elo in theory. As long as your runes are overall right, like your keystone is right, that's all that really matters. If you use them better than the most optimal rune page, then that's completely fine. So here they are completely griefing. Okay, nice. Okay, so one of the biggest things here well, what do you think is actually one of the biggest things here? I'll, I'll uh, give you the question. So we know they're on dragon, great. Mm -hmm. And we can see autos here, right? We yeah, see we want to pry all the squishies and not Yes. Zach. So if we come here and just ult over like this, we catch them all there. And then we just kill it. Like, we will literally melt them so hard, it's unreal. Yeah. Like Jin and Lux will just instantly die. Especially if we start using Q as well. Whereas Zack, like if he uses his ultimate, he's going to heal so much because of Radiant Virtue that you're not uh -huh. going to be able to do anything. You're going to be in this situation. 
Um, if I can uh, pivot back to what you said earlier, as far as prior to prioring, prioring my keystones, like what should I do different to nothing. do that? So like, no, nothing really. Your runes are fine right now. First strike is the best on fiddle six because uh, when you come out of uh, when you come out of visibility, when you come out of darkness, and you're fearing them, you'll always get first strike first because your ultimate will instantly start doing damage. I, okay, so maybe I misunderstood. I, I thought you meant more so I'm like, I'm not playing towards my keystones? Or, oh, no, or are you no, just no. saying having the right keystones? Yeah, yeah. So I, I just mean as in when you've got your room page in general, just making sure that your keystone is correct. Um, okay. The rest doesn't really matter too much. Like, it's it's more about knowing how the runes work. Like, thankfully for you right now, you have, like, the best room page on. But I just stick mm -hmm. to this room page. Don't change anything for the yeah, foreseeable no, I, future. <laughs> I used to try and meta game it and like, oh, they got more tanks. I'm gonna go predator with yeah. more burn, yeah. and I just said fuck it, and I'm just going. I just stick with this every time. Yep, it doesn't matter. What's more important is you just learn like the game rather than focusing on oh, I can get a slight advantage if I do this because you might think it'll give you a slight advantage, but if you don't know the champion inside out, then you could be giving yourself a disadvantage for all you know. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of part of the game. I, f I feel like it kind of falls apart for me in just that I try to prioritize objectives. Okay. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times it feels more reactive. I guess it just depends on how the game's going. Obviously, if I'm ahead, I, I, I usually feel okay getting oh. objectives and everything. Yeah, I was, I was debating it. You could have gone there for sure. You get Twitch and Lux, I think. Well, actually, no, Twitch's gone, but you still call Lux. Twitch is gone, yeah. So yeah, should have gone for it. There's... And then Twitch doing Twitch things. Yeah. Yeah. But also there, instead of running away from him. Just uh, fear him. Yeah, Rocket Belt fear him. Because like you'll you'll never get he's got eight hundred and fifty range. Yeah. So you're never gonna get away from him. This is definitely where the game turns into a fiesta, if I remember. Yeah, so obviously the issue is at this point it's it's kind of hard for you to do anything because their comp at this stage of the game is just significantly better. Mm -hmm. Mostly because, you know, you do have a gin. And so it's kind of if the Yasuo doesn't like do a lot in every fight here, then you're just not winning the fight, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sure. So this is the thing, like your your mindset towards how the game should be should probably shift more towards I need to do as much as I can early and play from that. Because then even if your team outscales, if your team doesn't outscale, like I have been coaching this game for, what, six years? And I mm -hmm. still get it wrong sometimes in terms of the scaling. I can still, you know go, oh, I think this team outscales here, and then there's something that, you know, I didn't quite take into consideration that actually stops it. So <clears throat> if I still get kind of like that, then, you know, it's going to be very easy to kind of misconstrue who's going to scale and stuff when you're a lot newer to the game. Sure. So you just want to focus on making sure you do as much as you can early. And a big part of that is going to come from, A, sequencing those camps properly, making sure you're getting ahead, and then once you kind of get your level 6, just making sure you have as much pressure on the game as possible uh, at that 6. So even when you feel like that, um, well, actually, I mean, so what you can do here as well, instead of running up like that, you can also walk behind the wall so that you can get an E off, which will fear him, and then you can Q him. Because as long as he doesn't see you, then you'll get it. Okay. 
and you'll still get that increase. So the increase from the fiddle six Q isn't um isn't if uh it, it's just if they're feared already. Which obviously your ultimate is the easiest way to apply fear, but you can still apply fear with E and W two. Yeah. Yeah, I mostly that's a, maybe that's another mechanic I need to, to focus more on is, is, I mean, I guess it goes in conjunction with the Q yeah. uh, bonus damage, but I, I, I feel like I do a good job of, of positioning for my ult, but maybe focus more on positioning for just a, a E fear. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's good though. So you can also um, you can also do. It. Do you know how your passive works in terms of the effigies? Uh, um, in what sense? Um, that you can basically turn into an effigy. Yes, I I honestly don't know how. So you just stick stay uh, still. So, yeah, but no, like how to, how to use that? Like it doesn't like I'm aware of that, but it doesn't make sense so much to use it like that. Okay. Like so, I don't. Um, you you also f so even if they see you, if you um, if you're not so the way it works is if you're not visible to the enemies, then you will fear with an ability, or if you're an effigy and you use an ability that will also fear. So if you stand still long enough for you to turn into a scarecrow like an effigy, then your abilities will fear. So what you can do is, let's say, for example, if you know somebody is going to walk into a brush, let's say, for example, right now, this red buff is up. You see Twitch pushing this mid lane and you go and stand in this bush. If you stand there and wait to become an effigy and he walks up, you can basically, e, even if he sees you, so even if he's on vision, if you're on vision, I mean, you can E him and it will always fear and then you can get the Q for the enhanced damage. Okay. So even if you just stand still and turn into an effigy, you get it. So it's if you're not visible, or if you're an effigy, then you'll be able to dam uh, You'll be able to fear with the next um, damaging ability. So it's okay. it's Hi. really it it sounds complicated, but honestly, one or two games trying it and you'll see it. It's it's yeah. not that hard. Yeah, no, I I always imagined you like I was supposed to use it. Um... As a kind of like a juke for like a like a Wukong would with his W or whatever, um, where like maybe he hits stop instead of actually Wing to juke him. I thought that's kind of how you use that effigy part. Oh no, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't realize effigy as an effigy. I would fear as well, even if seen. Yeah, yeah. So that's good to know. Like Fiddle Six is a rather complicated champion, to be honest. Um, he has a lot to his kit, but that also is kind of the reason why he's so strong, right? Like. Because he's got so much to his kit. Okay, so that's a bit unfortunate that... Yeah, another overstay on this one. Yeah, just a... Uh... I just saw Yasso go in, so yeah. I'm like, eh. So at this point, it's all, you, you never really want to go Morello on uh, Fiddles either. Because it's like, your fear duration should be enough to, like, get them to, like, 25% HP. So you don't really need to reduce their healing because you burst them for so much. It's better to go in this game. You probably should have just gone a Void Staff here. Because it would have helped you deal with, um, with Zack. Yeah. Also because alternator is such a horrible item as well. It's really rough. Because it's like, sure, it gives you additional bursts on one ability, but then you're losing a ton of gold while it's on cooldown. Whereas if you even have just raw AP there, like even like a blasting wand, you're going to consistently be at that higher AP. Yes, after I bought the uh, alternator, like I, I, was, I was fine sitting on the, uh, the orb or whatever it is, uh, but yeah. once I bought the alternator, I realized I screwed up. Yeah, so the the thing is, Shadow Flame is also... Usually, I wouldn't go Shadow Flame. Usually, I'd go for um, Rabadons. But Shadow Flame is really good here because Lux W shields them. So every single time Lux W shields, then your Shadow Flame will give the maximum pen. Gives 20 magic pen. I 
I also try not to overcomplicate my build too much and just kind of yeah. go the same build. Cause yeah, completely fine. I'll never pretend like I understand. Yeah, completely fine. You'll, you'll understand eventually. <laughs> nuances. Don't, don't yeah. worry. Like, eventually you will. But for now, you don't need to. Like, you simply don't need to. I'd say until you get to, like, Diamond, it's not really something that's going to hold you back. So, this is kind of another one of those situations where we don't just want to stay on Dragon. So, whenever it's going to be a 50-50 flip, just, uh, just back away. Look for a fight instead. Is there any consideration to him uh, staying on Dragon and me trying to flip over him? Wait, what do you mean? So like, so like if I if I go off to fight someone else, he's going to be on Dragon. He's he's just going to get it because I'm not even contesting it. So it's it's on like four thousand HP right now. Uh huh. So the amount of time it's going to take him to get that down to Smite range anyway. Fair. Is saying the only reason it gets down to Smite range so quick is because of your damage. I'm draining it, draining it, yeah. Yeah, your damage is huge. Just helping him out a little bit. Yeah, just just leash him for him, you know? Like, <laughs> make, make it interesting. Being, being a good jungler for their jungler too. <laughs> I mean, these things are happen. These things happen in pro games, so don't worry too much. Yeah. Okay, so luckily we're going to... So yeah, I'd say in terms of your build, one variation to start making, boots, rocket belt, zonias, good. Uh, but then fourth item, just go Rabadons. And then go Void. Just slash Medge somewhere in there? Huh? If I Slash uh, Mage Eyes if I have... Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, 100%. Because okay. again, you play around Pen, which is super, super good for you. Okay. This is the... This is where we finally lose it. Yeah. We were kind of out of position. Yeah. And Yasuo wasn't with us originally. So the Yasuo is actually AFK. So yeah. So I mean, not too bad of a game. Obviously, like I said, you were kind of uh, under a time limit anyway due to the fact that you know you don't really have an ADC that can reliably deal with tanks uh, mm -hmm. but like I said there was a lot of things early to focus on so I think the main things to focus on is A those considerations around the early game where are you going to party what are you going to do uh, what's your main job in the game uh, and then again just kind of using your abilities uh, remembering the effigy remember the empowered Q um, and then remember to consistently be looking for those kills as soon as you have your ult available. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean, you know, like you start sequencing and, you know, you're, you take this, you take this, you take this, and now you're on this. And now all of a sudden, there's a potential kill and the wave's like here. You wouldn't instantly then go, oh, they're full HP, I'm just going to instantly go down. What you'd look to do instead is you'd look to go, okay, well, there's a wave here. It's slow pushing in, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this, 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 and then as it pushes in, I'm going to come around, and then I'm going to dive them here, right? So you just, you're, you're constantly looking for opportunities with that six, and even if it's as simple as um, when you clear this Raptor camp, maybe stand here, and then, you know, what will happen sometimes is this wave will push up to here, and they'll walk up, and then you just instantly ult over, and you get a kill that way. Yeah, that's one of my favorite, yeah, <laughs> favorite ults. Very, very good, yeah. Um, so yeah, so like I said, obviously, even though this game was a bit unfortunate, there's still plenty to take away from it, um, plenty of kind of fundamentals. So again, things like the sequencing, stuff like that, they're the things to um, really focus on. Um, but yeah, I think in general, you know, it's going okay, and you're doing well in terms of stats, but if we can get these kind of fundamentals nailed, then, you know, you're going to fly up, fly up. Because um, what rank were you? Silver, right? Silver 3, I think. Yeah. I was almost Silver 2, and I've lost a bunch. So if you just incorporate these kind of things that we said, like gold will feel like nothing, honestly. This champion is a very good champion to play because he's so broken. He's just so, so good. Cool. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess the only other question I feel like uh, with the... Is there a 
uh, sorry, with the package that I purchased, is is there like another coaching with it? I don't remember. Yeah. I feel like there was like a 30 minute something. Yes. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll, and 